We are at Lake Tahoe today with Cliff Reedus and Hank Pronk, two men who build and operate their own personal submarines. Cliff and Hank will do a test dive on their own to begin, but afterwards they'll be taking UC Davis graduate students on dives to the bottom of the lake. The scientists study the lake ecosystem, but this will be a rare opportunity for them to actually see it firsthand. Uh, you're going to try to basically keep a visual on Hank and just follow him. Yeah. R-300 ready to dive. 15 copies. R-300 copy, switching to OTS gears. I have a gamma in sight. I'm going to just do some circling and see if I can get some video on my head camera around gamma. So we're uh, powering down now. We're 250 from the bottom. Okay, R300 and gamma have turned on lights about 120 feet deep. Visibility very poor, maybe 10 feet, 20 feet. At about 154 feet, I'm on the starboard side of Gamma, probably within 10 feet of his vessel. Visibility very poor. There's R300 right next to us. We are so neutral, it's unbelievable. 43 feet from the bottom. We're about 220 feet deep. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. Did you flash him first? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Seven feet from the bottom. All right, let's see if it comes into view. There it is. Like being in outer space. <laughs> I study paraphyton, which is algae that grows on the bottom and the sides of the lake. Um, it is it photosynthesizes, and um, so it kind of grows up into these sort of strands from the bottom. Um, so it's actually a really broad range of things. So some of them are hard, and they kind of coat the bottom in a thin surface and then sometimes they grow on top of each other and they kind of get into these fingers that sway in the wind and they're actually really beautiful when you look underwater. I'm starting to see brown coming up. Oh, and it, we're here, we're here. Yeah, it's, it's on the ground now. Boop. Oh my God. Okay, so if you scooch to the right just a bit, okay. then I can see. Oh yeah. And then I'm gonna push us ahead so that. Oh my gosh, there was like little um, zooplankton. No, that's dust. <laughs> or like maybe, I don't know, maybe it was some, it looked like mice, but they were white. <laughs> so I guess it's not, because I don't think mice are white. Oh, wow. So cool. Hello, guys. So Whoa. you see, if we were to travel around, we could run right into a line or a road. Yeah. Or <laughs> I couldn't a, see that. <laughs> a tree. Wow. Oh, there's little things swimming yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, look at them all. I know, the little tadpoles. Okay, they're not tadpoles, seen those before. I don't, I don't they're really everywhere. know. Yeah, it's like coating the bottom. Oh my gosh, oh, what? Wait, can you go backwards? Uh, it'll dust right up. Okay. What it, was that? Oh my gosh, that was like. It on film. Okay, hopefully it's on film. Well, I don't even know what that was. 
I go on these trips and I forget to eat. <laughs> it's too exciting. It is. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> so I take this opportunity on the ascent to my muffin. <laughs> nice. <laughs> amazing um we went and i think we went down to 210 or 220 feet um we saw we didn't see paraphyton because the visibility was really low um, it was really turbid but what we did see um was a ton of mice shrimp so little shrimp like this size um that were scurrying along the bottom and there were hundreds and hundreds of those all across the bottom and then in addition to that, we saw crayfish, which were probably, you know, about an inch. Um, and at that depth, they look kind of like um, a tan color because the red doesn't go all the way down. Um, but those are like little tiny lobsters. Um, so we saw probably about like seven or ten of those, um, which was really, really neat. Um, those actually eat paraphyton, so that's cool. That is part of the food web um, here. And then aside from that, um, just kind of watching um, as we went down, watching the light disappear was amazing. Um, and then watching the um, sand kind of mix in with the clear water um, and watching the fluid dynamics as that mixing occurred was really, really cool. It's kind of like a swirling pattern. So today we're gonna be going down in the stub and we're attaching a sensor which measures conductivity and temperature and depth uh, to the sub. And this will provide us information with the habitat and the um, marine ecology that's going on. So we're gonna go through some, or through some mounds. Uh, there's a little sill that dips down and then it comes to a mound and fish like to spawn there and more algae will grow there and it provides a more robust habitat for the marine ecology in Tahoe and the native species. And so we're interested in looking at the physics and like the mixing dynamics that are going on to provide this habitat. So the idea behind these sites, the hypothesis is at the top of these mounds, it's more preferable for um, paraphyton or bottom dwelling algae uh, and plant matter to live, um, which would then support the, the, yeah. the lake trout and fish down there. Um, these mounds uh, allow them to avoid also like crayfish and the predators that kind of prefer the deeper, darker areas. Um, and so, uh, the ecologists will come out here and be very interested in taking photos and kind of sampling if possible and taking photos of what, what actually lives there and then we're kind of the physics team it seems like and so we have a conductivity, depth, temperature and depth sensor with us that we would love to get, find uh, some of these places that have maybe more algae than other, maybe the top of the mound versus between the mounds and try to see if we can figure out how the water quality or the water uh, physics, the, the, the salinity or the temperature is more preferable for the fish and the, and the algae compared to between the mound. Gamma is going away for one hour. So the sub's cooling off. So the <laughs> air is shrinking, so I'm just gonna let a little air in here. Awesome. And that's going to equalize it. Wow, look at the color change. You feel that in your ears? Yep, feel it. Look at the... I, I wish I knew more about geology and stuff. It's very barren down here. Only It looks like only a tiny bit of loose sediment on top of rock. And then it just, it does look like it just drops off or something. That's nice. Wow. It certainly looks like a drop off there. Do you want to head left or straight 
Um. Um. Keep going forward. Sure, go for it. <laughs> I. You. I'm yeah, the driver. You decide. <laughs> oh, we got a drop off. Yeah. Right? So we seem to be right on a ridge. Yeah, we do. Just ride the ridge? Sure. What do you think? Look that at looks that. Amazing. That's like, pretty gorgeous. That is something else. There's no life here though. No, is there? no, there isn't, which is interesting. Also. Oh, there's a fish right ahead. Oh, there he is. Wow. Fish do not care if there's a submarine. <laughs> Interesting. Like, we could probably run right up to him. We'll just ride this up? Yeah. Yeah, sounds good to me. Is that a rope land? Yeah, it's a little rope. Looks like it's been there a while. It's under these rocks. Oh, no. Well, we put rope in here all the time, so all you need is... Well, yeah. luckily it's not buoyant rope or we right. would be out of here. Yep, I understand that. We tend to retrieve our rope, but if something's well, going bad and it's caught on something, yeah, you gotta cut it. There's a live crayfish hiding under the rock right there. And that's all. He should come into view of the camera. Right yeah, I see him. Look at see that. him moving around. That's cool. We're starting to see some plants. I see a little bit on the bottom there. Another thing I'm looking for are mysis shrimp. Little tiny freshwater shrimp that we may think are correlated with their population with the lack of clarity in the water. So I see a couple down there, the little clear guys, only about a centimeter long. Right there, right, right there is one. There's another crayfish under there, another one. Oh, there's a bunch of them. They're in, they're under all the rocks. Here, all the crevices. Yeah. There's I one moving right in front one, yeah. of us. Oh, that's cool. No appreciation for them before this. I didn't know anything about them. Isn't this better than scuba? Oh yeah. We could talk. I mean, we could have a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a chocolate chip cookie. Um, well, first thing I want to say that that was a lot of fun. That was amazing. I've never done anything like it before. Um, it was really cool to see the bottom somewhere where I've been working. And it's, it, before this, it was just a mystery to me exactly what it would look like. We're always putting things down to the bottom, but it was cool to see it for real. Uh, we're able to follow the slope up uh, and find one of those large mounds that we were mentioning before. Uh, and we followed that up along and the, it turned from a, a bit of muddy sand to actually these cool rock formations. Um, with only just a tad bit of uh, mud be on top of them, which was pretty cool. Um, not much life initially, but as we worked our way up the mound, we ended up seeing uh, specifically crayfish, one of the things we were looking at, trying to find where they live, uh, hiding underneath these little rocks, which is pretty cool. I hope we caught them on camera. 
Uh, also some other little plankton and then little tiny floating invertebrates. A couple fish, for real. Um, good size. And uh, the one thing we didn't see was uh, any of this paraffin or algae or plant matter that would be the nice spawning grounds for fish. Um, so that was interesting uh, to not find. We went all the way to the top and over the top of one of the mountains uh, and didn't see it. So that's uh, interesting to know that uh, not on all these mountains will we find the, the spawning grounds we were looking for.